together. This makes me so happy. So happy. Sorry, I'm getting warm now. Because we're about to talk about iPhones. Yeah, that's why. It's not that I left the heat on in the room. The iPhone's hot, hot, hot. It's a PG show, Georgia. Can you please? <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Today is Friday, October 16th, 2020. Today, we are, of course, going to talk about the Apple event. And how did everybody do with their iPhone 12 pre-orders? This is the iMore Show. And let me start off quickly by welcoming to the show, welcoming back to the show for all of the good stuff, Renee Ritchie of youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Welcome to the show, Renee. Uh, that's my favorite place to be. Thank you so much for having me again. Thank you for not changing the locks. <laughs> You're always welcome back, but we especially love having you to t analyze the events that Apple has. And I'm wearing, also I'm wearing honorary clothing today. Ooh, nice. just for... I don't recognize that logo. What is that? That's, Viper. That's Viper's logo. He's yeah. in the chat room. He just popped in. So. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's a great logo. That's it is. gorgeous. It's a really great logo. Renee, for those listening, not watching, Renee just held up a t-shirt that has a logo on it of the, logo. the YouTube channel Viper. So yeah, yeah, it looks a little Iron Man-ish. I like that. Very nice job. <laughs> oh, he's going to be impossible now. Thank you guys. <laughs> We're no living with him after this. <laughs> Yeah. Also joining us from the show, that wonderful laugh comes from Georgia Dow of westmounttherapy.com and anxiety-videos.com. Welcome to the show, Georgia. Hello. Thank you for having me. What an exciting day. I Hello. hope everyone yeah. has uh, a lot of excitement in joining us. Yes, yes, yes. So much to talk about. And of course, Joe Keller, I'm assistant managing editor of I'm a more blah, blah, blah. Um, up early order pre-ordering his iPhone. How are you doing, Joe? What a week. What a week. What? Oh, wait. <laughs> did, Why, you did, something happen? did you survive? Did you survive? It's unclear. It's unclear. I don't, I don't know it. <laughs> only I'm Joe's only sure. partially here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Joe died on Tuesday night because he worked <laughs> all day long. And this is his ghost right now. You might, yeah, you might actually be talking to a poltergeist, which is fitting he's given a, the mind. He's a Draco Lich. He, come on, you're much more powerful than a poltergeist. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a lich because. Are you okay, Lori? Did you survive? I mean, you, we no, just had to no, do it. You I, had I don't to think I survived. <laughs> I don't think I survived. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. Let's start talking about the iPhone event, starting with HomePod Mini. Joe, give us a quick rundown. So HomePod Mini. Uh, it's a HomePod and it's mini. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's small. It's a HomePod and it's it smaller is. kind of package it is. thing. It really is. Just more right? round. It's it's small. That's the way to describe it. It's, <laughs> it. it's small and it's not. It's small, not small because it's also round. It is round. nearly spherical except for a, a flat part. I brought the top. up prop. It's this big. It's it's three point three <gasps> and this is three point five. So it's about yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not wrong. It's about wow, that tall. That's like um, it's like it, that's like smaller than my hand. You could you could throw it. No, and maybe play not. Ball with it. Pretty sure you it's could play ball with it. Plus. Anyway, <laughs> so this is it is a smaller HomePod. It is a hundred bucks. Um, love that price. Love that price. Uh, and so one of the one of the um things to note about the uh, HomePod mini is it's not just like a, a shrunk down version of the bigger HomePod, which has, you know, this massive, very complicated speaker array. It, it is much more of, you could really just call it just a speaker. Um, it, it's I, it, it's I, I smaller. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't have like, you know, a billion tweeters and, and you know, I guess it's just a, just a speaker in the way that AirPods compared to AirPods Pro are just yeah. earbuds. And that's actually a pretty great uh, comparison. The, so the sound quality is not going to be as good while still being good because this is Apple and it's audio and mm -hmm. Apple's great at audio. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also uh, a bunch of interesting new home features with it. Um, it has... It, now, Renee, correct me if I'm wrong. It does have the U1 chip in it, yes? It does. It does. Yeah. And just not to go too off topic, but I'm, I'm hoping we'll get a new HomePod with U1 chips, and then they'll all know where they are in a room, and we can get <laughs> physical as well as computational <laughs> yeah. surround. Mm. So, yeah, what I'm envisioning is sort of a future with an updated big HomePod, and you can have well, an actual surround sound system f full of HomePods and HomePod minis in the same sort of link. <laughs> 
So let's actually talk work. about that for a minute, Joe. Uh, one of the things that Apple did mention, I think, after the event, uh, forgive me about not knowing the exact timeline of things because I was really busy yeah. that day, but I believe it was after the event that um, you won't be able to connect a HomePod mini directly to a HomePod. So there's no daisy mm -hmm. chaining. Yeah, but I think scary, that yeah. there, but I do think that there's a little misunderstanding that I think people are using the phrasing syncing. And I, I don't think that's true. Renee, yeah. can you talk a little bit about like what that means that you won't be able to, to like pair a HomePod with a HomePod mini for stereo um, audio, for example? Yeah, it's a little bit complicated because Apple sort of meshed together features that exist and features that are coming and features that mean the same thing but do different things. So um, they have this concept of stereo pairing, which takes two HomePods and turns them into one addressable device. So Lori is absolutely right. You can pair a HomePod mini with a HomePod mini and turn them into a stereo pair. You can pair a HomePod with a HomePod and turn it to a stereo pair, you can still play any music you want to any combination of HomePods you want, but you'll have to do it individually. You'll have to say, send this audio to my HomePod Swole and to my HomePod Small. You won't be able to say, just send it to that stereo pair. Um, and the other point of confusion was Apple decided to put a feature that doesn't exist yet up on their website saying home theater. And the HomePod mini was not enabled for home theater. And everyone's like, but wait, it does home theater? And so what that means is coming soon, and sort of now, it's so confusing, you'll be I, able to send 5.1 audio or Dolby Atmos audio to your big HomePod um, with, from your Apple TV, and that will ingest it and then make a spatial audio soundstage for you. It's not real because there's no actual speakers firing up and down, and there's no actual speakers behind you yet, although there is hope eventually but it'll simulate that using the same computational sound where the HomePod mini, if you connect them to your Apple TV, you'll get mono with one and stereo, literal 2.0 Dolby stereo, like what we watched the original Star Wars in on the, on the other one. And apparently there will be a dedicated uh, Apple TV mode finally, Lori, for people like you and me. I know, I know. I'm not on the TV beta, but when I saw that announcement, I just jumped for joy knowing that as soon as it's 14.2, I believe when it comes out, yeah. that I will finally be able to use my HomePods as um, default speakers and I won't have to reconnect them. Joe, I know you have that issue well, too. Yeah. And I, I wish I could tell you that I am living in the in this home theater future where because while I am on the TV OS beta, there's yeah, I am not on the HomePod beta. Yeah. <laughs> so so no matter what you have to be all in on beta all over the place in order to actually use it right now but it's coming it's coming and, it's and coming. nobody knows it's like they haven't said anything we still haven't got the home pod update that we thought we were going to get with ios yeah. 14 and yeah. like nobody home knows. software home pod software is still 13.4.8 yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's behind <laughs> Wait, blame georgia um, georgia <laughs> Oh, talk a little bit about, um, I, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, let's, let's start with privacy because the key okay. part is you can go. opt out of <laughs> Apple storing your recordings, which yes. I think is a really big deal as we're talking about privacy. And, you know, I think that a lot of people when they're putting something into their home and they, they there's a little creep factor that comes into it. Um, and so I think that's a really nice thing that they can kind of opt out to it. And, you know, November 6th, shipping November 16th. So, yeah. So you're waiting. I, it's really cute. I, I have the regular one, but it's really mm -hmm. cute. Mm -hmm. So does Renee, does HomePod mini have spatial audio? So yes, but it's limited. So it doesn't have the size or the capacity. Like remember that, that graphic we saw, Lori, when they announced the original one and it was like stacked with all these tweeters and sub like all these things. This ha that was a stack. This has like a ring. So it's, it can't produce the quantity or quality of the sound. So it's like a, it's also a small soundstage. Yeah. And let me, let me just speak to the experience of HomePod or uh, AirPods Pro with spatial audio. These speakers are teeny tiny. And they are, the uh, spatial audio is so impressive that it like Freaky. hurts my brain yes. trying to figure out what the heck is happening. Uh, did you, uh, did any of you watch the Apple event with um, AirPods Pro 
it just it, was, it just blows I was my too mind. Stupid. I only had one in. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> oh, I would have no. heard Tim Cook like dancing across the stage. The at the begin it's toward the beginning when they're talking about HomePod Mini. Everybody, after this is if, if this is over, this podcast is over. Go listen to like the first I don't know ten or so minutes of of the Apple event with AirPods with spatial audio because they play music. They they show just like a little scene of like a family in their house. And the music is playing from the HomePods Mini, and then the presenter is talking about it, and it's—I I swear to you—it feels like music went into the background of my brain while a person talked in the foreground. It, I like—I don't understand. Like it just—it's this is Bob. not. That was former head of Dolby <laughs> Marketing, Bob Borges. <laughs> this isn't just stereo, or I like it. I just can't even fathom what's happening to these tiny speakers in my head that are making they're all up in your ears that's like, i think that's so... the, what really sells it they're all up in your ears and then they had the tiny house and you're just like oh tiny house and then they hit you with the sound it was almost like gamifying our brains that yeah it's direction. so impressive so even with homepod <laughs> mini not having the same speaker the same powerful speaker array, array as homepod swole i think this <laughs> is going to be pretty impressive I like I don't have them. I can't speak to how great how loud that would be, but it's probably they're probably not quite loud enough to have like two HomePod minis be your only stereo output for your television set cuz for me with with two regular HomePods I would say like it it's just fine at that point, but you know, it it, it could go louder, but my HomePods don't go louder. So uh, HomePod mini probably doesn't quite max out at that, but I, it's really impressive. And the price is unbelievable. hundred bucks. You can get That's four really of them price. for almost the price of one HomePod. Yeah. That's Are a really good any? price. Are you going to put them in like different rooms of the place, Georgia? You know, I don't think that I need to because the two that I have really work well to be able to kind of reach everything. So we have one upstairs and we have one downstairs. And so we can play music and kind of deal with everything. I don't think that we would need more. Um, but for $100, like it's a really good price if you would want. Would you trust them in your kids' rooms more than you would an Amazon Kitty Echo? I like would 100%. Tiger. Yeah, no, I would 100% yeah. trust them more. Because that I reminds also, me. Intercom. That is for kids, you know, each one of them having one in their own room, which, you know, you don't want to spoil your children or anything. But but if you were going to spoil your children and get them each in a uh, HomePod mini, I think intercom is an amazing yeah. feature because for that exact reason, Georgia, your kids can be messing around upstairs, not doing their homework or not coming down to dinner when they're called or it's time to take them somewhere and they're still upstairs and you can intercom them and tell them, get your butts down here. So Instead that's yelling, pretty cool. Which is which is the way that <laughs> I do it. They'll be like, right "Mom's story didn't work." Sorry, Mom's yeah. story didn't work. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. anything. <laughs> um, but I also I'd be worried about them, like you know, getting all the answers to their homework, which they already yeah. sometimes do. Do what? sneaky. Are you going to make your Joe get one, Maurice, so you can intercom him about articles? <laughs> if if, if don't say the word articles. If if right intercom now. worked across states and not just within your own wi-fi house i would be getting homepod minis well. for everybody <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> the deadline is 10 o'clock the deadline is now <laughs> joe where are you at <laughs> where's that article really not. joe would just say three didn't work <laughs> yeah you just right. unplug it yeah I, um actually that's a good question um so they advertised intercom as something that works on iphone like yeah. through AirPods and in CarPlay. So does it actually work across or outside your own Wi-Fi network? Um, my guess, it, they said it works with CarPlay? Yeah. To, the, to they, a HomePod showed, Mini? Well, so one of the things they show, the, one of the examples they showed is uh, someone saying, um, who's hungry? I've got pizza. And they did it, it on CarPlay. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I wonder what that's... Still if that was that like, way. was the car like in the garage and it was all question. under the Wi-Fi network or is it um, relating to your um, Apple ID? Maybe I wonder. Family sharing, maybe? Family sharing. Yeah. yeah. That could be it. Yeah. I, I guess we'll find out. Kids, aren't we? I don't think you're going to get all of I'm more on this. On <laughs> Laura, you need a couple more fake life. kids set up to test this. Yes. Yes, exactly. Hey, if you get a HomePod out of it, a HomePod mini out of it, 
by from me, but you have to have it signed up through family sharing with my Apple ID. I mean, isn't that worth it? No, probably not. I don't, I don't know that it is. <laughs> you know what? I bet a whole bunch of people would be like, yes. And then all she all he keeps hearing is Keller. So um yeah. how how do you charge the home pod mini? That's actually a question that has popped up. Um apparently somebody in the chat room or in our home forums had asked this. So let's answer that one. So <laughs> yeah, you just plug in, it, isn't it? It's a plug-in, it's a plug-in speaker. There's no battery. Exactly. Same so way, it is the same way with the yeah, same way with the yeah. regular home pod is yeah. You're still is, is there an AC all adapter? The pictures like all the pictures have it without any cord. And I think that that's, oh, that's where it. everyone's kind of looking at. That was, no... that's what they did with the HomePod standard though, too. They, they right. made it look like it didn't have a cord cause it's pretty that way, but it just, it, it is has pretty cord. that way, but it's right. not, they didn't say that the cord is right behind you it. See it so in the video good. when they pan across the counter, there's a cord coming out of the back of it. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's going to be a great um, kitchen speaker, I think for a lot of people. Yeah, yes. I plan on getting one for the bathroom because I can listen to podcasts or music while I'm showering. One for the kitchen because I can listen to podcasts or music while I'm cooking. Um, <laughs> and one for my bedroom because I don't, I, like in my bedroom, I just have like a TV with no external speaker. And it's fine. It's just the bedroom. But it'll be nice to have a, my TV, my Apple TV in my bedroom hooked up to a better audio system just, yeah. just to have it. Like it'll be yeah. nice it's to just have movies, that in there. You know, as one does. And being able to set alarms for your home pods. Like I, I think, uh, like I said, my home pods right now, my standard home pods are, they are my TV entertainment sound. So they don't, I don't even use them to listen to music or home pod or podcast very often because it messes with <laughs> uh, the connection being lost uh, while watching TV. So they kind of don't do anything except TV speaker. And I love that I'm going to be able to have peppered throughout the house right. speakers that will be used for different things like setting an alarm clock in the morning right. you know i can i can wake up to you know <laughs> rage against the machine or something like that if i want to yeah. in my bedroom and coming like with the the accompanying software update with the home pod you'll actually now be able to use apple music tracks as alarms yeah that's new yeah. I think with this upcoming software update, it, they made a point of saying it. Yeah, I don't think that you can set uh, alarms that play music right now. On, on like, I haven't tried setting an alarm on a HomePod, but I don't. I think I think that it's just a alarm sound. So, well, I mean, so I have a friend, uh, Thomas Frank, who's. I have a friend who's famous for if if he presses snooze on his iPhone, he's got an if it or something or shortcut that automatically texts uh, or tweets. Actually, Thomas Frank is sleeping in just to embarrass <laughs> him into making sure he never presses the snooze button. <laughs> That's but I wonder if like Lori programmed like, like one of her least favorite songs, like if it was like a Justin Bieber song as an alarm, if she would do anything in this world not to have to have that go off. And then you know what? Yeah, and that yeah. would work. That would work. I had, that would wake people up for sure. Yeah, I think my husband had playing. Not unusual um, to the, be loved by him. Oh, that I. I would still sleep through that though but he had it playing uh like the screaming of of someone's like someone screaming out it was really it prodigy. was really it's from a movie it was not prodigy i like prodigy i would wake up happy no <laughs> this was this was from the, the end of braveheart i'll just say that and yeah. and it i i would hear the the little like i couldn't do it i couldn't do it i would wake yeah. up and immediately to turn that off right? yeah 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 so yeah. that would work anything right? to not hear that it, there are certain songs that as soon as i listen i as soon as they start playing i'm just like can i please leave this building because i cannot <laughs> listen to this so song you would anymore wake up. you would wake up yeah. for those that would probably work for me for sure yeah <laughs> where's a rocket i need off the planet <laughs> yeah exactly well so that's homepod mini I'm excited. Um, Joe, yeah. do you remember the exact date? Did they give an exact date that so, you can pre-order or order uh, it? Pre-orders. Uh, pre uh, Apple doesn't really call them pre-orders, do they? Get, they yeah. Get like orders Order. are on yeah. uh, November 6th. November and 6th. they start arriving on the 16th of November. Okay. Right before Thanksgiving. So we can make our house sound good go. and uh, not have family over because that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Just in time to spend... Not as many hours in the kitchen cooking things. Right, yeah. <laughs> Too bad. So That'd you might so as well great. get this so you have company. Yeah. The, you can talk to the... You. Serious your holiday guests. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, so the next thing that was announced would was, of course, the thing that we've all been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for, the iPhone 12. Um, so 
in order, it was iPhone 12, my favorite, iPhone mini, um, and then iPhone Pro and iPhone Pro Max. So let's talk about iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini. Um, first, uh, let's talk about um, everything that like that we we expected to hear, we heard of everything it looked like. It looked like exactly with the rumors that have been we've been talking about this whole time. The the new blue color is probably one of the things that stand out the most. Beautiful. Oh, good. What do y'all think about that blue? Not the Pacific blue of the twelve, the Pro. We'll talk about that later. But the standard um, iPhone twelve blue. It's a really pretty blue. Yeah. Let's just it say is. it. That's a it's very gorgeous. handsome. Which one? Which one? The 12 blue the or the 12? 12? The 12. The 12 blue. The 12. We'll talk about the 12 Pro in a minute, but right now we're just talking about standard. Because they're different blue. blues, just to make the me sort yeah. of, yeah, the sort yeah. of cobalty one. Yeah. On the, yeah. On the standard uh, some, 12. some of our coworkers have actually talked about maybe buying a 12 instead of a Pro specifically because, really? because they, they like that, that color, color so much. Better. It's oh. It's that pretty. Yeah. It is that it's, pretty, though. I'm not even going to say it is. Yeah. It is that pretty. Yeah. I have to say, I really, uh, I really like that Apple pulled away from the pastel color a little bit yeah, with I don't this like one. The either, yeah. I, I, I've, I've thought, I've always thought that all the colors were very pretty, but this color is like enticing. It's, it's just they were pretty, mm. but they were a little bit less professional seeming and a little bit more candy like. Right. Pastel. So I, yeah. I like, I think that the color choice is quite nice also. Yeah. Oh, it looks pastel and minty just to make Micah Sargent sad. The, yeah. the green is a very light, minty green, like almost. Brush your teeth with it. It's a, yes. <laughs> right. Well, it's like the, the 1960s, question. 70s bathrooms green, which is not, I, I'll say, I'll just say it. You can hate me. I don't love the green. That 70s show green? It, it is. It, it's yeah, it's, it's color, hospital bathroom soup. green. This is this is what <laughs> you've seen in hospital green. bathrooms. So I can answer Annie's green. question. She wants to know if the red is the same this yeah. year, and it's not. It's different. Yeah. It's more orange. Last year's was yeah. slightly more magenta. This one's a slightly more orange. Don't do you think that? It. Do you think that has to do with just the material itself not being able to get that exact representation, or is that just because the the um. Product red, or actually, it's not a product red band. It's just a red band that um, comes with the product red Apple Watch. It also has a slightly orange color. Yeah. So, is this just Apple just slightly changes the red each time, yeah, or I think for fashion? Like, well, okay. well, maybe you could say their 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 industrial design team. They have a dedicated color person. She's awesome, and she probably doesn't want to not work for a year. Um, but other than but that, also, I think it's gotta be trendy. Well, I think that yeah. also it, it it states that you're you have the new phone, right? Mm. So I think that that yeah. statement is really important, and for a lot of people, it matters. The the it's the strangest thing because you think that most people would not know, but you know, when the phone comes in and I bring it out, there are some people that are like, "Is that the new phone?" Or is that the new watch? And they can tell just by the little divot or right, right, you know, that the the phone color, shape, or size is a little bit different. So people well, are the, noticing. The good thing this year is that the phone is different. So yes. that, you know, like it doesn't matter what color you choose, your phone is going to look different than everyone else's iPhone out there because of the new shape and style. So that's that's pretty great. So can I ask you the big question about this that I've been pondering like for days? They basically made the regular iPhone 12 as good as, almost as good as the previous iPhone Pro. Like it's in some ways better because it has 5G. It's got the exact same display as the iPhone 11 Pro. It's got a few things that aren't as good. Like, you know, it's not going to have as much, but they, they basically took the normal phone and made it a pro. And then the pro phone is just like extra, like just a little bit extra. What yeah. are they for? Is it just like they, they're like mic dropping? Like what, what yeah, so got rid of the differentiation? It's not less, like less than 1080p anymore. Right. Last year, the iPhone 11 to me was the first time that Apple put out a phone at the same time as a pro phone where the fact that it wasn't the pro phone actually was the better phone for most people because it uh, last year they actually made pro pro they made it more advanced than most people need while making the 11 just as advanced as anyone could possibly ever want it was the the differences were so small it was like the there wasn't a telephoto lens the um the screen was, uh, remind me, LED, uh, OLED, uh, OLED, OLED yeah. Yeah, features, like, right? it was such a minor difference that I was so impressed with the 11 versus the 11 Pro that I thought, 
they don't even need the pro now, except for there are some little things about the pro model that are a little bit more advanced for people who want that, that little extra. And it got even better this year, just like you're saying, Renee. I do really think they are really trying to differentiate a pro line versus a non-pro line. I think they've done it. They, they're going to continue to do it more with the um, iPad line. They made the iPad Pro, the iPad Air 4, almost as good as, if yeah. not better in some circumstances, as the current iPad Pro model. But the next iPad Pro, I think, is really going to be niche for the pros. And I think this year, the, the iPhone line did the same thing. The 12, the pro line is really for pros, while the standard line is for everyone else. I think um, one of the the only real significant differences has to do with the, the LiDAR camera, right? And the, the LiDAR camera, camera, it's got two extra gigabytes of RAM. It's got 175. It's, it's, it's 800 nits instead of 625 nits for bright for typical brightness. Same Same HDR brightness, though. I mean, like, it's really, like... Not like it's, it's nerdy differences. Actually, Re sorry, uh, I have a quick question for Renee. Uh, so, one of the big differentiators in the in the video um, capabilities of these phones comes down to uh, Dolby Vision. Now yeah. they all shoot in Dolby Vision. This is true. Yeah. Yes, but it's the Pro models that shoot at 4K 60 in Dolby Vision. Yes, and it's for it's limited to 4K 30. And Dolby yes. Vision on the standard phones. What a what is the difference that the there? amount of RAM? So you have six gigabytes oh, okay. of RAM so on the pro the phones and four gigabytes on the non-pro phones. I see. And I know some people are like, well, Nokia phones have been doing HDR10 since 1812. So you iPhone people are just stupid. You think Apple invents everything. But Dolby Vision is a very specific, yeah. very high demand process to go through. And they're doing it in real time. And you can even go and put a filter on and they'll recalculate it for you in real time. It's a lot of heavy lifting. They're doing a lot of work. Yeah. And the glass is different. So Joe, you talked to us about it before, right? The um, So there's yeah. there's ceramic shield, which is like a cr baked in crystalline yeah. structure inside the glass. So last week, this rumor popped up like kind of last minute last week. Right. And we talked about it a little <laughs> it was bit. It really last minute. And yeah. it was called, you know, they called it a coating. But really what it is, is that they've worked with corning so you know a, w a little while back apple corning where makes the the plates the that you could drop yeah. and as long as you haven't microwaved them a whole bunch of times cuz <laughs> i've done that and said they don't break and after you microwave them they do just letting you know okay yeah, they also so, they also make the gorilla glass that the the iPhones uh, have been yeah. using right, for right, for many many years now so yeah and so yeah a while back apple entered into a partnership uh, a very expensive partnership with corning and they get some they get some exclusive stuff um they get you know first run or first crack at some new technologies and um this ceramic shield glass is one of them so what they've done is they've uh what do they call it like crystalline like ceramic crystalline it's impregnated structure. glass yeah. in the glass nano yeah. ceramic crystals oh, to form to in the glass. glass that's what it is yeah nano ceramic and, it, and they, they claim, what is it, four times better drop, drop. performance right. versus the iPhone 11 line? But that's also because but of the Lori... shape, not just the, the strength oh, yeah. of the glass, because it's not curved anymore, and non-curved glass doesn't break as much right. as curved glass. But Lori, I have to ask the question, So, because I drop my phone all the time, Lori. <laughs> But this is only on the front, I heard. Like, is it on the back as well? Because, like, I'll just say it. I got a 50-50 to drop my phone on the back part. And so is it really four times as likely to break or not? Uh, well, I mean, I I guess, yes. It's it, This is for the screen on the front. This is yeah. not yeah. for the back. So, yeah, the back. the back of your – but seriously, Georgia, have you ever cracked the back of your phone? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, then this might – this well, might I have, happen to you I still. Have, but well. I, like we used to do draw, like we used to do stuff that was ridiculous. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I think I still have one of the cracked phones that are, that are there that are cracked on the back of the phone. Yeah. So the, I the, will. Well, Georgia, you, then you're just going to have to get a MagSafe case. Yeah. Oh, oh, don't get me. Go I know we're, jump, we're jumping ahead. So we're right now we're comparing the 12 and the 12 pro a little bit. Let's, <clears throat> let's, uh, Wrap that Stick one up real it, quick, yeah. and then talk about the mini. Oh. Yeah. You're so excited about the mini, aren't you? Oh, I'm so excited about the mini. 
nothing new. This is like all rumored stuff that we had heard. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. It's the edge to edge screen. If you want to call it edge to edge, I know some people are going to freak out that it's not actually edge to edge, but to me, <laughs> it's edgy to edgy. Yeah. You, you get person. the point, you know, it's just marketing. You get the point. It's, it's full it's 3. screen. 3.2 millimeters away from the edge of the screen. But it's not, yeah. let, well, let's just say it. It isn't the edge. Like it's going to be like, there'll be more and more the edge. It's closer than it's been. It's certainly closer than any iPhone with a home and button has ever been. And do the edge. People complain that they keep accidentally touching the screen. So you can't win either way. Just accept your. Diamond. I know. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, you do actually. You you do sometimes accidentally touch the screen when you didn't mean to. It it happens sometimes. So you yeah. know. But the 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 uh, this again. Like I love this because it is um like really it's only a little tiny bit bigger wider than the iPhone the original iPhone SE the iPhone five the iPhone four that size. It's only. A quarter of an inch bigger. I, I don't. I don't know exactly, but it's not much um, in terms of width, and it's maybe a, like a half an inch taller. So you get more screen, and and it's edge to edge. So you get more, 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 more screen, but you still get that small hold it in your hand more. size. One of our coworkers, Karen Freeman, um, a case maker, sent her dummy versions of phones so that it, it's for case testing and things like that. And she, you know, in one of our video chat meetings, she held it up in her hand and I just swooned <laughs> at it because it was so small and adorable and it looks so exciting. I cannot wait. And I'm so sad that it's not coming. I, I couldn't pre-order it today. I still have to wait two and a half weeks or whatever to pre-order. You're getting, the, pre -order. You're getting the, the, the iPhone small? I am absolutely getting the iPhone small. Yeah. And what color, Lori? It, in that beautiful With, blue, of course. This and is the just year of the, blue phones. The small... I've heard it's totally adorable. Like the people I know who have been using them have said that they're totally adorable. And that really warms my heart. We can't I talk about it. this too much or we're just going to lose Lori to hard eyes. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be so happy. <laughs> oh, there she goes. There she goes. I saw it. No, but I she's saw been it. dreaming of this for. She's been asking for this. Yeah. She's been writing about this for so many it's years. years. And you like I, the square design over the, oh, the yeah. rounded as well. So this is really they're RTSD giving you for her. almost her. everything you year. want. It's it's like they've been reading my articles and listening to my complaints and have actually given me what they I want. They designed a phone for you. <laughs> yes, it is for me. I'm so happy about it. It is super appealing. I gotta say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think this year, this is the first time in at least three years, I, in my opinion, maybe four years, that Apple has done something with iPhone that the tech pundits can't complain about. You know, I don't hear anyone saying that they're Watch. not innovating, that they're, I know they, they always do come, come up with something, but nobody's. Things, but the person who complained they didn't have 5G in iPhone 11 is now complaining that they have 5G in the iPhone 12. <laughs> or they spent too much time on 5G during the presentation. Yeah, yeah. There's always going to be something to complain about, but it's a, a brand new design. They uh, they do now have the 5G uh, across all of the phones. It's it's a, this is just this was an amazing year for Apple. I think I am so happy that they did these all separately because I think my brain would have exploded. Not even as a writer, but just all of that yeah. amazing stuff coming out would have blown my mind all at one time. My brain. The nerds are going to complain writer. about the the lack of 120 hertz. Um, Still, they, they're going to give them something. T talk about that for a minute, Renee. Give, like, what's the big deal about 120 hertz, and oh. and why didn't we get it this year? So there's there's two schools of thought on this. Um, 120 hertz just means the display uh, refreshes faster, so more often per second, and it look, makes everything look smoother. The iPad got it back in 2017, and Apple doesn't do it constantly because it drains battery. So what they'll do is mm -hmm. ramp up if you're using the pencil or you're scrolling or you're doing one of the very few games that supports it, and it just, it just looks nicer, it looks smoother. Uh, but they did that because it's LCD and they added something called oxide to the display and that lets them make it adaptive. So it can also ramp down to 24 hertz to save battery power. Now, uh, the Apple Watch does that too for the always on display. <clears throat> right now, Android phones do 120 hertz, but it's either on all the time and they ramp down the resolution or you can manually switch it. And the color point actually changes. It gets like more yellow or more blue when you change it, which I know must drive Apple crazy. 
So Samsung now makes LTPO panels for phones, but they don't make enough of them. They didn't even put them in the mm. Galaxy S20, just the Galaxy Note. And that's really what you need to make adaptive refresh on a phone. And uh, so Apple's probably gonna wait till next year. But people will say like, how come this $300 Android phone can have it and not this iPhone as well? But it's bad because they're, the they're just turning it on the whole time or letting you turn it off. And yeah. So really what it, come, what it comes to, the choice that Apple made comes down to the fact that technology hasn't caught up with the the need that Apple has for this particular They're feature yeah. in in term like in terms of number one they can either provide you with a um a feature that is not not good it like you know it'll be a battery drainer or there's just not enough panels to give you give everybody that benefit on a phone yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. about the, it's about the quality of the Hertz, not the quantity of the Hertz. Mm -hmm. Which is very typical of Apple. They'll always yeah. hold, they'll hold off, they'll wait until they get, you know, until things are kind of perfect and then they jump in. And then, you know, there's always those people who complain that they're behind this the times, but what they don't realize is that Apple is purposefully waiting until the, the features are, the technology ca yeah. catches up with what they need the iPhone to handle. Yeah, it's so. conservative. It's Anything that hits the battery, like with the screen resolution, they went to retina and they stopped. They didn't keep going. They went to retina and they stopped and then 3X for OLED and they stopped and they, they waited to do 5G. And a lot of people made fun of them, but then the early Android 5G phones don't work on the new bands. Like they literally, literally you bought one for future proofing that you can't use in the future. So yeah. like some, and sometimes it's okay to, Oh, yeah. Anthony, in the chat room, I forgot to answer this. Does the ceramic coating mean no screen protectors? And no, because the ceramic coating, the ceramic glass helps with impact from shattering. It doesn't help with scratches. So if you didn't like scratches before, you're not going to like scratches now. And I'm sure Lori has an article for you on screen protectors. <laughs> yeah, we do. There's already screen protectors out there. I have to say, case makers and accessory makers were really on it this time. And I think the leaks helped. I mean, there's a little no-name companies that are putting out phone cases right now that look like they are pretty much right on. So, you know, congrats to the case makers and, you know, thank you to the leakers for providing that kind of information for the case Truly. makers. <laughs> yeah. Usually we get, you know, maybe maybe a half dozen, maybe a dozen case makers that actually have like the correct specs. Um, and But this time around, it just seems like a lot of companies that just any old thing, they just decided they would give it a try and hope that they were right. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so with the iPhone 12 Pro, um, actually, what is, Renee, why do you think we don't, we're not calling the screens retina anymore we're calling them xdr what what's what's that about There's what's the difference for retina xdr and I, I think it's just it's one of those things where like apple you, like, they won't tell you about ram because they don't like the ram story because they don't need as much ram as android so they don't want you to think about that it's it's um but they do want to talk about like we have a pro display xdr and we have 5g and uh, you know a14 processor and it's just it's basically a high density oled display is all it means. And they're really, really well calibrated. I still think Apple's okay. color calibration is best in class. So mm -hmm. they look really good. If you want to watch all our Disney and Marvel and Star Wars movies, Laurie, they're going to look just absolutely fantastic. And the, the HDR video that you're shooting. Yeah. And so you actually are, to me, the person who really understands these these subtle differences in, in clarity of screen way more than I do. Maybe it's because of my aging eyes. I don't know. But I'm right there it, with you. The difference between the pro model and and the standard model, uh, like, am, am it, are you specifically, Renee, are you going to see a difference between those? I know I won't, but uh, do you do you think that's going to be like a, sig a significant difference there? So this is what blows my mind this year is they put the same panels. I didn't expect that. I thought they put like old OLED from like the iPhone 10 or iPhone 10s. Oh, yeah. Like okay. The only difference is the brightness. The only it's like the HDR the brightness. brightness is even the same. The typical brightness, which means like when you're not doing fancy HDR stuff, where it has to boost up the brightness uh, to show high like high white levels, it's 625 nits versus 800 nits. So like if you use it outside a lot, you might want the brighter screen, but mm. it's almost almost the same panel. Like they really don't care. They just they had zero Fs left to give about differentiating <laughs> the phone. 
Well, I do. I do think, though, that there is a need for that pro thing. But I but more and more what we're discovering, and I think what Apple is positioning is that most people don't need the pro. That's really what it comes down to. But doesn't Apple like money? (laughs) I I think they still like money. And I mean, they didn't change the they didn't change the prices on the uh, on the pro line. Mm -hmm. No, where they kind of fiddled with them on the uh, standard line, on the 12 and 12 oh, they, mini. Was, so here's why I'm so conflicted. I'm so conflicted about the pricing because on one hand is 2020 and I think people can ill afford to absorb price increases. And I realized the 10R was uh, 800 bucks and it went down to 700 bucks for the 11. And now it's up to 830 bucks because it's only discounted if you buy Verizon or AT&T or mm. T-Mobile in the I, I think they, Renee, I think yeah. they actually changed that. I think well, no, all if you still four... buy it from Apple. If you buy direct yeah, from Apple, if you buy direct... 30 bucks yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is unfortunate. But at the same time, they basically made it a pro. Like I right. which you paid nine hundred nine, you paid a thousand bucks for last year. It's as almost as good, except for one camera that you paid a thousand bucks for last year and you're getting it for eight hundred. So I'm right. deeply conflicted about this. I'm not conflicted about it. I think it's okay. I think that the the price range for that uh, Georgia, you actually spoke to this when the um, Apple Watch first came out, that there's sort of a, uh, like our brains kind of want the middle one, uh, you know, in a, from a marketing perspective, that the, the, the middle is kind of the one that we want. And Apple is kind of giving us the iPhone 11 and 10R still exist. Those are entry level models for people who really cannot spend more than a very low amount of money, or they're just getting a phone for the first time. So they're going to go with that one. And then there's the most expensive one, which is for the people who have all the money in the world and they want to have the best of everything. And if you don't have that middle ground, it's a kind of almost like a not a good experience for a shopper, but with that, with that middle one, that's what everyone wa- Apple wants everyone to buy is the middle one. And they're just sort of giving us the marketing platform that is just common, but they're, they're not making the iPhone Pro for everyone. They don't want that money because they know everyone wants to spend $800 on an iPhone, <laughs> less people want to spend $900 on an iPhone. And, you know, they, they have, so they, they end up with that range of, you can get a secondhand phone, you can get things that are refurbished if you still want to. So we were kind of taking care of that. And then we have that elite level where you're going to get special yeah. features, feel really fancy, but you are going to spend the money to that, which again, Apple's still going to make oodles of money. They're not, they're okay. Don't worry. Right. They're not, <laughs> they're not dying today. They're, they're and, absolutely fine with it. And, and if they're going to make the cameras. More then we have this these this really optimized camera system um and like a giant the, size and size yeah. on a <laughs> okay. enormous size this is the largest phone that they've made this is so big phones, this is such I a big like phone that phones. it makes me wonder like why apple didn't just make it a foldable phone at that are you going to so it, are you gonna put it in the <laughs> chair next to you it's going to get its own bedroom. It's that big. <laughs> I think Apple waited long enough because like a couple of months ago, people were so stressed about spending money and everyone's like, nobody can put out a flagship phone. Nobody should be releasing any products this year. Read the room companies. But now it feels like, like people are psychologically so over it. We want the distraction and mm. we're willing to spend money again that maybe even we don't have. Just like, please give me a new phone. I'll take it. Baby Yoda and a new phone. I'll take anything at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. It's honestly, it's a little bit difficult for me to uh, when it comes to Apple and and I, I don't know if anybody else knew this that the iPhone event happened on the same day as Amazon Prime, and I more um, covered both things on on the same day. Sure. And uh, we had heard the rumor of of the release of of when the um, iPhone event might happen. Um, and, and then heard the rumor of when the Prime Day event might happen. And a lot of my coworkers said, Apple would never have the iPhone event on the same day as Prime Day because <laughs> Prime Day would take up too much attention on the internet, right? And Apple gives gives no Fs. <laughs> they, like, they, have you met? <laughs> yeah, they, and, and I th- so like what you're saying, Renee, like I don't know because uh, in a way, Apple doesn't give two Fs because everybody, yeah always is excited about Apple and there's no reading the room going on there. They're just like, we're, we're putting out a phone and it, it could have been, you know, 
April and they and actually they did put out a phone in April now that I think about it. So yeah, no, it never matters. Like they like yeah. no matter what Apple does, there's always a lot of excitement around that. Whether it's good or bad, there's going to be lots of people who hate Apple and iPhone stuff, but the everyone talks about Apple. So I I don't know. I don't I think that it didn't matter that they waited and I I think honestly they waited because of the the situation with supplies and the pandemic like just causing the postponement. I don't think it was in an effort to like stave off people's um, fear about buying things. That's what I think. <laughs> no, Apple doesn't. Apple doesn't care. Yeah, I was really, really excited about the optical zoom, though. I was like, that's like awesome. Five mm -hmm. times optical zoom to me was like, I was like, yay. I'm going to break your heart now because that's misleading. Oh. It, it means oh, from the ultra wide me. to the telephoto. It's, oh. not, it's not five times from the wide angle, which is what you think. It's still when you just two. Number. It's still just it's a, two times. It's five times range, not five times zoom. It's two point okay. five. Well, times now I'm slightly now better. Heartbroken again. It's slightly better, but it's only 0.5 better. It's not. It's point. Yeah. So it goes from 0.5 to 2.5 zoom. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Because okay, it's okay. an effective 65 millimeter lens and not a 52 millimeter lens anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Forget about yeah. everything I said. Just erase it. Yeah, sorry. No, it's, it's like one of their big weaknesses because every other phone, like uh, Google got rid of theirs, but every other phone has these massive periscope zooms. And even Google uses their HDR feature to do zoom and Apple doesn't. And Apple has an HDR feature and I really wish they do it because like maybe not today, but everyone has kids and pets playing in parks or they're seeing something, you're at a concert and Zoom is important. Zoom is, I use it to look up like ingredient lists or read the fine print <laughs> on something. And I'm like, I, I just get my phone. The beep, I'm well, like, have I have, I have a secret for you, Georgia. There's yeah. actually a accessibility feature that you can use and I use it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. No, but um, I think, uh, I don't think for me, I, I, you know, I went from the 11 pro to the SE for the past six months. I didn't miss it at all. I don't need telephoto at all. I I've I've been just fine. In fact, I find it to be more pleasing to get the wider shot and then crop as needed later. So I never I tried it when it first came out and every once in a while like you know I've got the the pro out now cuz I had to send back the SE. It was wonderful for 6 months, but it's I don't have it in my life anymore. So it was a great phone and I'd still recommend it to everybody. But because you know like honestly, I would buy the SE right now if it weren't for the fact that the 11 or that the 12 mini is coming out. Like that would have been my my phone forever. So there's a, a new forever phone in my future though. It does but, look um, like I like it cuz the telephoto looks different. Like it compresses the wide angles tend to pull everything apart like your nose comes Forward, your ears go back, you pull out from the background, and then when you go to the wide angle, it's pretty normal. And then the telephoto, it just it starts compressing things together. And I like it for product shots because you don't get like sort of weirder distortions around the edges. Yeah. Yes. And Renee, that's the thing though, is like you are a use case that is not common. And the only thing I'm speaking to right now is like most people. For sure. I like I I get that question a lot. Is like, what you know, should I get the more expensive phone? because of the third camera lens and i my answer is no it's it's if that's the only reason to get the the pro don't don't use that that it's you're not you're going to be just fine without it that's just my strong opinion on that <laughs> let's talk about magsafe oh yes, exciting please yeah let's okay oh boy joe that's I want you boy. to give me some details about this one uh, because, and this is because we had a, a wonderful meeting the other day um, in our in our I More Work chat where uh, so, some some of our coworkers could not fathom understanding what the heck MagSafe is on on the iPhone. Starting with Joe, answer this question: Is there a magnet in the phone itself? There is. There is a magnet. There are actually, I think, a couple magnets. Uh huh and an NFC wire and a magnetometer that detects magnetic fields to, I think, activate it better. Is that, what is the magnetometer for, Renee? Well, the magnetometer is, the, is a digital compass, but the, it just gives us a weird name, but the, there's like a donut ring of magnets. Yes. Like a little circle around the inside and, of the and, and it's built in with the, uh, it's sort of part now of the uh, wireless charging assembly. And yeah. so the the iPhone 12, all the iPhone 12 still work with standard Qi wireless charging, 
but now they also work with Apple's new MagSafe charging and they uh, so like the new MagSafe charger, which looks kind of like a big version of the Apple Watch charger, will just cl click right on. I can't the wait. Back I can't wait for that feeling. That's going to be so sound. exciting. That sound. <laughs> yes, so yes, yes. an Apple Watch charger, but big. Yes. So yes, the app, putting gonna... the Apple Watch in is very satisfying. So satisfying. This looks much more satisfying. <laughs> yes, yeah. it does. And it's I think a big it's, version. And I think it's because the MagSafe charger is actually smaller than what it's being attached to rather than being the same size. So it there's just it has a much more satisfying little click. And all and what's great I think about MagSafe too um, is all of Apple's cases this year for the new phones are also MagSafe. And so, so there's awesome. no more there's no more like wiggling them out of the case when you're when you don't want to use it. It just slides on. So it's so nice. if I can just just so instead of it having it curve around the phone, right? It will just even putting the case on your phone will be that little click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The question With I think hugger. actually and it, <laughs> I do have questions about getting the case off, but I think you can really just kind of push it from the camera bump. Well, but... you'd probably. Oh, yes, that's a good point. Now, I, oh, the, yeah, so I Apple Silicon, that. Apple Silicon case, it usually it it has sort of like a little bendy at the top to let you like easily slide back, though, right? Isn't that I don't, how the well, silicon case works? Not usually. It's usually just sort of one piece of silicon. So that, but that bendy bit is part of generally. Um, and I don't think they did one for the uh, 11 series, but the um, the battery case. The, the, the battery case battery is case, what I was thinking of. Which, okay. That's going to be great this year. If they make a smart battery case for the 12th series, it's going to be a smart. Especially Mag if it's just magnetic. Case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to do any crap. You don't have to plug anything. In. It's just going to slide on charge. And just think about the accessories that we're oh, get with this, right? Uh, like you can get the little pop things that you can put onto the back, which I'm always into. Where's my Louis yeah. Vuitton back? Where's my Louis Vuitton they, backpack? But back? All kinds of other stuff. You could have it attached to like a, you know, gorilla stand or you could like, you could have all kinds of really awesome stuff, right? A little robot that just, you just like, I'm going all the way. I know. But refrigerator. <laughs> oh yes, I love yep. that. Laura, yep. do not think of that. You, you could, could put your phone on the wall stick with stick it on your refrigerator. And actually, that is yeah. a question. Will does it just work as a as a standard magnet? I believe you, so. It was the car mount wasn't it? Didn't they show a car mount during the show, during uh -huh. the, uh, the uh, mat, but it's a Falcon? magnetic car mount. There is yeah. a, there is a little software component to this where it will detect like it will detect the specific MagSafe charger and do a special animation. Um, so but that's does, not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't work with other magnetic or right. metal things. It right. just means that there's an animation for that particular. I, I oh yeah. There's already question. selfie stick stabilizers that are like magnetic to stick onto it. Mm -hmm. But Renee, the, if I can ask you, so they have the little magnetic wallet feature and I know you love like, like minimal kind of stuff. Like you yeah. don't even use a case always on your phone. Is your phone now without a case? You don't usually use... You're caseless, which is no you case. live on the wild side. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but having that little magnetic wallet thing, is it going to be erasing all? Oh, you too, Joe. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Mm. I mean, you don't want to make Johnny Ive cry. Not me. I, I got mine. Yeah, got a case too, on I, mine. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> and it's safe because yeah. I dropped these babies. But yeah. um, is it going to be erasing data on your credit cards? What do we have to worry about for having yeah, a magnet? Apple showed an Apple card going into the wallet. So I'm guessing like if it's anything like an Apple card, it'll be fine. But if you have something like one of those daily hotel single use key cards, that might be a little weak and you might want to so, put that in a separate pocket. So here's yeah. the thing. this is what Apple said about its wallet accessory is it is shielded. It is specifically made to be shielded against you know, mag magnets. Or, yeah, so magnets and that's, magnetic interference. That's really good to know because when, when, chargers first came out you know when when wireless charging first came out that was kind of a big thing is that people were using wallet cases and and resting them on their charger and erasing their their <laughs> um their strips they were not erasing their phones but like it messes up the strips and i remember going to a hotel one time and there was a little notice right on it that said if you use um a phone with wireless charging please don't put this um this 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 card with your phone because it might mess up the yeah. magnetic strip. So, yeah. 
So this Lori, you're going to be putting your iPhone mini in your tiny change pocket in your jeans, right? So it'll be shielded from everything. Will it fit in the little one? Does it fit into the little one? I can't wait to find out. <laughs> that is it the is one gonna... thing about the difference of like, you can go really small now and you can go really super really huge. Yeah. But like those I have... dogs in, the, in the Disney cartoons, you know, like the big dog. Right. dog like Lori will be able to take this everywhere, right, Lori? Yeah, like it'll exactly. Just... I, so I have this fanny pack that I've had for at least 10 years now. And it's my favorite thing in the world. It's what I use. I don't wear, I don't carry a purse. I use this fanny pack and it has a second pocket. And I used to stick my iPhone SE in it. It fit perfectly. And I haven't been able to use it for that since I stopped using the iPhone SE. And I'm so excited. I did, it might still be too tall. It's definitely going to be thin enough, but it might be too tall for me to actually like close the top flap. But that's going to be the first thing I check as soon as I open that box is I'm going to stuff it in that little pocket and see if it fits right. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> I got to tell you of the, of all of the MagSafe accessories that, that have been uh, sure. previewed, I'm really looking forward to that Belkin one. I've said this before. I've called it the, the Yggdrasil of charging. It's nice. uh, so it's got a base where Hopefully it can consistently charge AirPods Pro because I have such a hard time on the mat I use right now getting it all lined up right. And then it's got a like a T-bar at the top. On, one, on the right side, you put your Apple Watch, and on the left side is MagSafe. And, and did you notice the left side with the phone? It's like slightly angled, so yeah. you can like... Ooh, it's so pretty. Yeah, you <laughs> are you like naming your phones Mjolnir and Stormbreaker just in honor of Yggdrasil? <laughs> no, no, it's going to be It does look you. really pretty, though. I'm with you. It looks very classy mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Especially with all the stuff on it. Okay, so there is a circle of magnets on the back of the iPhone 12 models so that kind of anything can stick to it. Um, we're What we're probably going to see is MagSafe uh, certified things that, that will be like more specifically certified from Apple, but also just lots and lots of things that you can stick to the back of your phone, including, yeah. you know, like just pictures of things and mirrors and things like that. So there's the, it's wide open, but my next question is, can I use an iPhone 11 pro with a MagSafe charger? Yes. Yes, you can. How, how does so, that work? So it, <clears throat> confusingly and it <laughs> you can't use it like you um you can with an iphone 12 so if you just have like the standard magsafe charger and not the belkin charging tree or whatever um on an iphone 12 you know you just you kind of slap it on and it work it kind of it'll kind of act like you it does with an apple watch where you can kind of hold it by the cord and just like wave yeah. it around or whatever yeah and you can just kind of swing it um but <laughs> The the iPhone 11 doesn't have those magnets, so you kind of have to lay the the charge the MagSafe charging puck flat on your desk or whatever. But you can set it like center it on the thing, and it will act as a wireless charger. Okay, so it does still work with with non magnetic phones. It's just that you don't get the joy of the the, the satisfying click. Yeah, the but. <laughs> And also, the other thing you don't get, uh, one of the benefits of using MagSafe charging over Qi, so Qi charging in iPhone 12 is still 7.5 watts, which is fine, especially if you're just using it to charge overnight like I do. But MagSafe charging is up to 15 watts. It's like double the charging capacity. And now that's that's that really nice. Double the speed? I don't know if it works out exactly double the speed but it it is faster it is a it is notably, notably faster faster because that's yeah. the thing is that often you're like oh my god my phone wasn't charging and you want to just yeah. i only of, have a half an hour <laughs> i need to charge it up really fast <laughs> yeah 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 and, and, and yeah and um that 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 also brings up the the um the phones don't come with, we're running out of time, but the oh, phones don't go. come Let's with do the USB-C um, brick, power brick. Um, but they do come with a lightning to USB-C cable, which there's a little bit of controversy around this. And I think I understand. And Georgia, tell me, how do you feel about no headphones, no wall port? 
Well, Jack, well, I'll, I'll, adapter. Yeah, I'll just say it. It that's it's absolutely ridiculous. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think it's short-minded of Apple. Like, and I'm sorry, I totally do not buy that they couldn't like I'm sorry. The the ear, like you could wrap this just around the phone. If you are worried about space, you could just wrap this baby around the phone and the wall charger that would fit to the phone. I don't I only have two. I have a lot of of iPhones. But the difference between USB-C and USB-A, right? I have a lot, I, I have two. So mm -hmm. the charger that they come with, I only have two and I have tons of phones, uh, maybe not Renee level of phones, but I have a lot <laughs> more than the average person of phones. And I have only found, and only of them, I've only found one of them. So when they went out there saying that there's so many, um, the the ports to the, the house part, um, that people have so many of them. No, we don't. Because if I don't, you definitely don't. Not Renee. Renee probably does. So yeah, I thought that that was possible. ridiculous. I think people are going to be furiously angry and send your pitchforks and um, fire. Yeah, George, and will lead it. For it. <laughs> I have yeah. USB A chargers. I don't have USB C ones. That was only yeah. in the iPhone Pro. I have two. Pro last one year of them is not the even iPhone. an iPhone one. I have, but I do I have old cables. But a lot of old cables are frayed. It's like, I, I, it's just a lot of extra men, so mental Renee, work. So Renee, if you need. don't have any, then no one. Well, I have a couple, but I mean, like but it's that not means no one has any. Cause I have, I, I, I know one cause I saw it. And that's maybe a second one. We think that there's a second one. So there's a Nintendo Switch charger somewhere around there you can steal. Yes, that's, that's think, probably what it is, yeah. I think this move, yeah. I think this move would feel a lot different if it was an included lightning to USB-A instead of USB-C. Yes. Yeah. But isn't I mean, that what all yeah. of us thought was going to happen when we were discussing this? Yeah, I don't know. Didn't all of us kind that. of nerds were so angry? Like, how can Apple not have the same cord that goes into a MacBook Pro? Because nerds forget. That I most know. No, yeah. I know, Renee. I know. I had that same thought, though. People were I'm mad. Both that... PCs. Why? But don't. Then put it in. Like, I'm sorry. None of us have this. Wait, then just a, put wait another the... couple years. Or put, put an adapter, put a little thing that pops off that's USB-C that's fine. And pops put on an adapter, it. Make the charger have both on it. I don't bloody well care. It's not that expensive for them. Just put the stupid thing in. Don't nickel and dime us to a phone that is already quite pricey. And you didn't lower the price for the 40 bucks that we're going to have to buy if we need a charger. So don't talk to me about this being it. about, this isn't about the environment. No one bloody well believes that. This is about Apple wanting to do something for Apple. And maybe it was about the you know EU having to say that you all yeah, have to have a universal. Georgia, the magnetic yeah. charger doesn't come with a wall plug either. That's like, true, really? Like, that's just like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But is it no. USB-C or USB-A? Sorry. It's USB-C. It's it? USB-C. Okay. So yeah. like this. <laughs> Stop it. No one believes it. I'm sorry. Send your pitchforks. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it, it should be then you should go into the store and you can get one for free. If you really want to say that you were doing this for us and the, the environment, then tell us you can come to the store and do it for free. And if you not, I don't it. buy it. Your, Pardon? Your, your, your store is closed. It's COVID. Sorry. But Georgia does have a, she does make a point there. Like we've had a, a little bit, like it, there's been discussion all over the internet about what Apple should have done in this, under this situation. And it, it, if it were just like you said, if it were USB a, I think that's fantastic and a great idea. They did it with Apple watch and I think it was brilliant. USB C there's not as many of those in people's drawers as, as there are USB a. So the, the, just like you're saying, Georgia, that's, that's correct. That this is, going to be a little bit more of a challenge for people and something like maybe a $15 rebate or a $20 rebate for people who want to um, add the, the charger to their bot, to their, to their checkout or um, you know, a, just a free one that you can just like even order online, just free. Yes. Just like if you yes. need it, Buy if it. you need it, add it, it doesn't come with it, but if you need it, add it. It just like seems it. like for such an expensive phone. Like mm. Apple, these are not cheap phones. If it's a cheap phone, I'd be like, hey, it's a cheap phone. Like you don't get everything with a cheap phone, but these are not. You're paying top dollar, dollar for service and experience. And I think of all of the angry people that do not watch the show, you should be watching the show, <laughs> and don't know this and are going to be buying their phone and they can't charge the damn thing. 
that is absolutely incorrigible. I'm sorry, that is such a horrible user experience. It's so unfair to people. It makes for a horrible gift. Then you can't get the, the charging port part because it's gonna be, you have, to, you have to buy it now and you have to wait two weeks and your phone, your new phone that you're so excited to do is dead. It's, it's just so short-sighted, it really does infuriate me. Sorry. And there, I think there might be a little bit of an issue with mm -hmm. Apple's messaging on, on what it means that there isn't a wallet. They were excited to tell people that they're doing more, like they're doing better for the environment. But as like, from the consumer perspective, when, you know, when my mom goes to buy a new iPhone, she doesn't know what USB-C means. She doesn't know the difference between those two, those two types. So when she opens her phone and she goes to, to plug it in and charge it, my mom also does not have a, a computer. She does, she uses an iPad instead of a, um, instead of a, a, a laptop or a desktop. So she's going to look at this phone and go, I don't, I literally don't know how to charge this thing. Literally don't know how she can plug it into her iPad. I will tell her that when the time comes, but there's going to be a lot of people who they will just, like you said, they'll open this box and, you know, Apple is no longer a tech nerd website or company. They are like the iPhone is for everyone. And there are a lot of people who don't understand the difference between those two. And they will have just no idea how to charge their phone when they open that box. They're going to look at that cord. They're going to try to plug it into their USB-A port, wherever that is, whatever that is. They're not going to understand why that didn't work. So it, it, it is surprising that that this ended up being the way they, they went about it using USB-C instead of USB-A. Baron in the chat room Siri. had it. Sorry, Vinny? I haven't seen Georgia this angry since Siri. I know. That was, in, that was I, I actually, when I first found out, I actually had a little bit of a moment. I couldn't, <laughs> it was so much worse than what I had expected. And Apple's such a smart company with marketing, such a smart company with their messaging. And yeah. All over the internet, no one buys this is for the environment thing. None of us buy it. Um, I think that Baron in the chat room gives up a great point. Then if they really cared about that, then you should be able to exchange your um, USB uh, A to C and, yeah. you know, or the wire. You could exchange like whichever way they, they you know, a little, you know, you could get a free uh, dongle. I hate dongles, but like whatever they have to do to be able to make this work, they could then choose to do. But yeah, it's it's that Joe. And apparently yeah, they lowered the sorry. price of the of the plugs. At they did. Apple. They're all the same price it's, now too. And yeah. I'm sorry, I'm still having to pay for it. It's not free. Oh, I'm, just, I'm yeah. reading off the chat just to make sure. Okay, that sorry. All. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Joe. So what if the one of the um, things I wonder about this is does Apple figure that because uh, one of the reasonings is that you know everybody has the little power bricks. I wonder if their reasoning is if you have the little power brick, you also have a USB A to Lightning cable. If you have a brick, well, you, have, you probably have a cable. It, it, and I that's, wonder if that's what they think. And that's true. But um, Brian Brian Wolf, writer for iMore, he actually wrote um, his feelings about the situation. And yeah. and the the problem is that Apple is saying to you, look at this great new advanced technology, this high speed, fast charging. And by the way, you don't get to use it if you don't have a wall port, a, a wall adapter that works with it. Sure, you can go back to your boring old USB A to lightning, but you could buy a new, a new USB-C wall adapter for the extra charge. So it, it kind of really does like, it hits exactly what Georgia is talking about, which is, uh, which is say, one of the things money. I wonder is, is if the, cause like when they took away the hair, the AirPod, sorry, when they took away the headphone jack, they introduced AirPods and it really pushed the adaption of AirPods. And I was hoping like if they take away the wall charger, maybe they're doing it to really push the adaption of wireless charging. Yeah. But then they didn't yeah. put the adapter in the wireless charger. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It's like and getting that, AirPods that don't have a case. What is that? Yeah. What, like what, what is the and, point? It is a charger. It should and, include a charger. <laughs> And Renee, it's might... necessary, right? Like you could say that the the earbuds. I'm sorry, Lori, I cut you no, off. No, no, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> I'm so wrapped You're up. excited. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you could say that you don't need to have earbuds. You could say that. You know, you don't need to. It's not a necessity. But you can't say that for charging the phone. Like mm -hmm. hello, like it's like having the car, but saying, "Listen, we're only giving you three wheels." <laughs> figure the other one out. Yeah. You actually and, need to have a steering wheel 
and probably four wheels on your car. Just saying. And, and what they did do for the original when they first got rid of the um, headphone jacks jack is they put an adapter in the case you bought your first iphone 10 was it with a tiny little you uh, lightning to 3.5 millimeter jack adapter it came with it it yeah. was just there so you know they didn't they didn't do that this time they didn't give anyone any adapting option they just said here's a lightning to usb-c cable figure it out also, you know, when, if you lost that adapter or you needed a new one, you know how much it cost? 10 bucks. 10, not 20, not 30, 10 bucks. Right. Yes. Cheapest so, so, dongle Apple ever made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I, I do think that it, the significant decrease in, in the environmental impact that Apple has, will have by doing this, it's, it's really good to see that they're doing what they can. But uh, another point to make that Brian also made in his in his um, I'll put I'll put that in the show note or in the yeah in the show notes for everybody so you can link to it. Um, so for the millions of people that are about to buy an iPhone without a wall adapter, that app, that Apple will now have a, a, a smaller environmental footprint. How many of those millions of people? are going to have to go to Amazon or Best Buy or Walmart and buy just that wall adapter with new packaging and have it shipped to their house. That's millions of additional purchases and environmental impact that Apple doesn't have, but now the rest of the companies in the world have. So there's that. Or Apple still has <laughs> if you order it from them. Yeah, you know, <laughs> sure. My <laughs> my only thought, my only thought is that, and, and this is my my hope for it, is that you know Apple does listen if enough people are in, are angry enough, um, and maybe they'll they'll you know say everyone can get one for free if they so ask to. Because you get a bumper and you get a bumper and you exactly get like they they do try to make people happy and try to fix mistakes when they've made something that is an egregious error. Which for me, this is an egregious error. And I think that it's not fair to people that are buying a new phone that may not know the phone. And I think, Laura, your point of, you know, they don't know the difference between USB-C and USB-A. And it and they won't even understand why it is not, you know, what what's what am I doing wrong that my phone, you know, did I miss something? Am I losing it? And all of the mm -hmm. angry people calling as the phones come in. And mm -hmm. so hopefully they'll they'll do something a little bit differently. I don't think anyone should have to pay anything. If you're paying anything, that would really make me upset but you know if it was very cheap and uh quick so that you don't have mm -hmm. to wait with your phone being dead while you're waiting for um your wall port yeah yeah i think that's that's very true that um apple does usually kind of make amends for things that that didn't go according to plan and this might be a situation that a lot of people are going to be confused and f have a bad user experience. And we know that Apple, like they pride themselves on having a good user experience. And this might be a situation where we're going to see some kind of announcement where they say, um, you can come pick up a free USB-C charger at an Apple store. If you or can't come pick it up, one. we'll send it to you. Yeah. They'll probably have something like that or not probably, but it, it would be great for, to see that they, for them to do something like that in the near future. There was so. a thing with the Galaxy Fold where a bunch of people were thinking about returning it. And if you went to the website to say, I'm changing my mind, I'm returning it, they're like, we'll give you a hundred bucks to keep it. <laughs> like, oh, three hundred dollars. So then everybody would claim the three hundred dollars for the yeah. or not. And then yeah. later they returned it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or they or they never were gonna return it and they just yeah. wanted a three hundred dollars. Oh, that's true. Smart Lori. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we have been chatting long enough. This has been, again, a wonderful time. Georgia, I love when you get fiery about stuff. And this one, it was, it was so much that my heart started pounding a little bit out of like, wow, she's really angry. It's a like good job like, there. Why didn't they even record the, why didn't they even include the phone? They should take the phone out while they're at it. Why wouldn't they <laughs> need the phone anymore? Imagine how great it would be with no box. Yeah, yeah, it's good right. stuff, good stuff. I, I think we're, I think a lot of people are going to be really excited to hear you g go off in a rage on that one. It's good. <laughs> so thank you to everybody who showed up today and listened in and and spoke up. It was really great to see all of the comments made and any questions you had. I, I hope we answered as many questions as we could. And uh, 
Um, thanks for showing up early. We started early today and lots of people are here. So that was great. Um, we usually uh, record live every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so, you know, subscribe to our iMolar channel and hit that bell button. Renee, you're so much better at that stuff. Is it hit the like button or hit the bell? <laughs> hit the subscribe button and bell. And bell, because that lets you live. know when we're going live. So you can pop on in and join us live every Friday, usually at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you to Jim Metzendorf for making all, our, all of our audio sound so good. You might have to turn down George's volume there for that, that last little 15 minutes. <laughs> and Renee, thank you so much for joining us this week. It really oh, is course. just joyous to have you come back whenever there's an iPhone event. We hope that you'll come back every time Apple announces something. In other words, possibly as soon as November 17th. I don't know if you guys heard the rumor <laughs> that came out that there's going to be a Mac event on, on November 17th, but there it is. So hopefully is you'll be back. Black Friday? No, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, ugh. So hopefully you'll be back in a month ish. And um, thank you to everybody who listens to the show on iTunes or your podcatcher or watches the YouTube video later, not live. We really appreciate it. We, we love that you come around and check us out. And uh, this has been a very exciting episode of the I Am More Show. Have a good weekend and week, everybody. <laughs>